Welcome back to our uh, demonstrations. In the last video, we discussed all the theoretical uh, and, and practical assumptions for applying the dividend discount model. In this video, we're going to look at the demonstrations. We start by uh, looking at those assumptions and then the calculation itself. So the dis as we mentioned, the dividend discount model require the estimation of growth rate and different growth stage and also the risk premium. Um, I actually lay out the calculation here in Excel in, together with uh, the Bloomberg system. So the first thing we want to look at is, okay, how to calculate the, the risk premium. Um, here, if we from Bloomberg system, if you use type uh, a company's name, for example, Apple, and then you type DDM, and you hit return, this will, it will load up. It will load up the the cal whole calculation. Let's not looking at the all, all the numbers. Let's just focus on the risk premium calculation. So the risk premium is start by, of course, the bond yield and the country premium. Uh, so how is the country premium calculated? Of course, if you click one, then it will show it will show you more detail. But here we can we can see uh, from these windows more detail about each country's risk premium. If you click uh, CRP country risk premium, it will give you all the whole list of risk premium. Here I just show a few countries. So what did, what did it do? It, it actually calculating the average dividend yield for for example for United States is using S&P 500 and and then it calculating the average growth rate and based on the current growth rate and the existing growth um, dividend yield you can you can estimate the future dividend yield and of course you can also using the average dividend payout ratio, you can see the dividend payout ratio here is 35%. That will give you uh, all the estimate of what the market, like when, when we're talking about when the market reach its maturity, it should actually reach its uh, average. And, and in the uh, model assumption, we assume 45%, but currently the S&P 500 have an average of 35% payout ratios. Um, but with the dividend yield and growth rate, we can actually calculate the uh, percentage market returns. Uh, that and that subtracting the risk free rate that give you the risk premium. So this is how the risk premium is calculated. Um, so once we have the risk country risk premium, what we need to do is then find out a com company's beta. So Apple's beta is 1.1111. Again, if you want to find out a, a beta in Bloomberg, you can just type beta. And uh, you need to under Apple, you need to load up the security first. and then you type beta, it will give you an estimate of the beta here. So the adjusted beta is 1111 and that's why the model will actually pull 1111 here and you just calculate the risk premium by multiplying the country premium with the beta and then use the country premium the risk premium plus the risk free rate that will give you the cost of capital. So we solve one the, the discount rate problem here. So in terms of the cash flow uh, estimation from the Bloomberg uh, analyst estimates, uh, you can you can pull out the next year annual forecast if you look at the. A new forecast, you will then able to see what are the next uh, two years forecasts. Here, 
you can see 10.063 that is the next year's forecast so you Bloomberg then pull out this information and then put it into this two two years forecast actually all the three year forecast we is available and also the dividend per share so we have the dividend per share as the forecast from the analyst forecast somewhere here then we can use this information to cal calculate the payout ratio so that's what the analyst forecast information we need to use how about the growth type um, given the long-term growth rate which is 14.397% that is the uh, Bloomberg analyst forecast uh, rate and the Bloomberg system allocate to Apple to uh, average growth category therefore we will have seven years of growth and ten year of transitional year with this rate okay and of course at maturity what is the growth rate at maturity this will be calculated based on the as we discussed based on the retain ratio which is one minus the payout ratio times uh, the cost the required rate of return from this this company so which is this number okay um this there's some rounding errors just small difference here but that's fine what we have is everything here and then we just lay out the discount structures so what Bloomberg did is for the forecast you start from this information that is already there dividend per share so those are the input and these are the input this is the calculation because you start using this uh, uh, payout ratio to calculate this um, dividends once you get the dividends of course um, we, we need to lay out the let's the most important thing is asking about the growth rate so the growth rate if this growth rate is already calculated based on the forecast this is the long-term growth rate which we're taking it from here uh, and then after the growth the gr uh, growth year we will look at the transitional how the transitional calculate it's, it's like gradually declined from this number to that number and it need to evenly de declined so we just have a formula to make sure it actually gradually declined and reach to this point um, so we have the growth rate we have payout ratio uh, which enable us to calculate the dividend per share once we we then actually use this as a cash flow the only thing different is the last mature year the cash flow here we need to uh, is the cash flow is not just the dividend because this is a uh, annuity so we discount this using the the constant growth model um, using this uh, permanent dividends per year uh, uh, per share and per year divided by the cost of capital minus the growth rate so that is the that is the that give us the terminal value at the end of year 19 this companies at that moment in time worth that much um, and then so these are all the cash flows and we need to discount them by the discount factor so each one of them this is discount by one year this is discounted by two years so it's, it's one divided by the one plus the cost of capital to the power of the year you need to discount it notice this one is not it is the same as the year 19 because this value actually is is this is the forward year 20 is the forward one year of year 19 at the end of year 19 this is the value so we need to discount it by the, this 
discount rate rather than 20 years discount rate. So what do we have? We have the present value of all these 19 years uh, in, and then plus the final value. So this will give us 145 at the moment. And similar to the, the Bloomberg system, slightly different because I think it's just a random rounding error. So this is the video showing you how all these things actually connect together. Um, for example, you you may see why actually you can try a lot of things here. One is one thing you can do is of course changing the long term growth rate. Let's say if you change it into eleven percent, okay, that's close enough to the current price. So you can see the market currently possibly priced at about ten percent long term growth uh, for this seven year of growth. Um, that's basically give you an idea about how the market think about or so what's what's wrong about this assumption. Uh, let's look at another company possibly like uh, Google. See what happens here. You, you can see according to because Google actually not paying dividends so um, for for the for for the period and um, with this long term growth assumptions it actually priced the Google with much lower than the current market uh, price. So that is one of the possible drawbacks when companies do not pay dividends um, the calculation actually get messed up a little bit. Um, let's look at Facebook. There's also in the actually Facebook now is in the average growth period rather than high growth, so it's my mistake. Um, and um, again, the value actually is so far off. You may think this long term growth rate actually is an incorrect estimate. So, what this um, video actually demonstrate is you can actually look at the uh, a company by multiple stage growth and given different assumption you can then come up with a value ultimately it gives you a tool to explore what are the underlying assumptions uh, you can change to to get to the market values and but also if you have strong belief in your research then you can actually calculate your own intrinsic value and compare with the market decided whether you should long or short that particular security. If you have any more questions please uh, just uh, email me and, uh, or actually ask me in person when you see me.